Hello and welcome to 100 Days of Tonalism. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. <clears throat> the study that I've done today is by George Ness, and it is called Spirit of Autumn. Um, it looks like uh, this painting went pretty quick for me. It was definitely one of my favorite uh, George Ness paintings, of which I have many, many favorites. But uh, I think this is a really great autumn type of painting. Um, having looked around online at uh, some of the, uh, you know, to try and find you guys some information about this painting, uh, you know, I, I can see that there, I have an awesome version I'm going to put a link to that you can zoom in of uh, George Ness's original. It appears to be really lacking in contrast though compared to the study I made, so just be warned about that. and. Uh, Keep in mind, I'm working at you know five by seven. He's probably working at like thirty by forty-four inches, so uh, there's going to be some big differences. But one of the things I've noticed when I zoomed in is that I, I definitely have absorbed some Georgia Ness from doing all these studies in uh, my latest series of uh, fourteen uh, scenes that I just completed and uh, photographed the other night. Um, I'm really starting to see uh, this uh, Stumfato type of effect uh, materialize more in my, in my uh, larger pieces and, uh, trying to paint larger all the time so um, I have a nice little uh, bio to read from Artsy tonight about uh, George Ness. we talked a little bit about him quite actually quite a lot about him but um, this is a good one uh, George Ness's fiery career of constant innovation and spiritualizing style of landscape placed him at the forefront of American modernism Ness evolved from an early classic Hudson River School style to a more personal style of intimate landscape art, influenced by James Abbott McNeil Whistler's formal principles of design and abstraction, and by the spiritual writings of Emanuel Swedenborg. I would have to say I would see Corot and the Barbizon as a greater influence than Whistler on Ness, but that's on my head aside. And that's his notion of the civilized landscape, abandoned farms and woodlots whose stone walls and cart tracks implied narrative without human presence, became the iconic imagery for a legion of followers. After 1880, his late synthetic landscapes were purely conceptual, made in a studio practice that relied on memory of actual places, but was fundamentally an embodiment and paint of the artist's deepest feelings. With these dematerialized landscapes attuned to the transcendentalists, and thus pioneered an essentially conceptualist art, one that would find echoes in the work of the abstract expressionists and the color field painters of the 20th century. Uh, that sounds just fine, you know, but <clears throat> um, that's basically trying to put him in the category of modern painters that I don't think he'd have anything to do with, especially the abstract expressionists. And I say that as a fan of Franz Klein's work. Um, Anyway, I hope you enjoy this uh, video today, and I also hope that you're reading my blog posts. I'll be uh, writing a bit about this painting there, um, so uh, read that if you uh, are interested in, in some more insight into my process. Uh, be sure and go to landscapepainter.co.nz if you want to see more of my work, and we'll see you tomorrow for day 25.